Welcome to the Teen Life Podcast, where we believe that teenagers are not a problem to be solved, but we are here to help you equip teenagers through the power of connection. I'm Carly Duke, and back with me is Chris Roby. Hey, guys. So, Chris, this is the last of our revisiting episodes where we're taking a look back at some of those first episodes that we did when we changed the format back in 2021. Mm -hmm. And I thought this one was a really good follow-up to Dr. Borba's interview last week. But I want to talk about this idea of searching for identity, which is one of the tasks of adolescence. Yeah. And I I feel like we talk about this a lot on the podcast. And even when I'm uh, talking to other, you know, to parents or professionals about teenagers, this is one of the things that um, even for someone who works with teenagers a lot, it's easy to forget and mm-hmm. to to kind of look over maybe the whys behind these teenage years being so stormy and so, so bumpy and where people are so scared of it. And I think it's really key for us who help teenagers to keep this front of mind uh, whenever we are working with a teenager or helping a teenager solve a problem or help a teenager work through a, a, a difficult behavior or issue is that it all has to be viewed through this lens of kind of what their job is right now, right? Their developmental mm-hmm. job is figuring out who they are. And right. that's a, that's a big task coming out of childhood. Right. And I just think This one is so interesting, especially probably as a parent or any adult in the life of a teenager, because you want to do it for them and you want to guide it. But this is really one of those important things that it's their task to do, not ours. Mm -hmm. And if you try to form their identity for them, it could have consequences down the road. And so I don't want to get too, too much in the weeds, but I do think it's interesting, Chris. Originally, we didn't mention Eric Erickson. But he's a psychologist who had a theory of psychosocial development, and one of the stages includes identity versus role confusion. So he's the one that really talked about these developmental stages and that one of them is identity. And he defines identity as a fundamental organizing principle which develops constantly through the lifespan. Hmm. So it's not something that's like one and done, which I think we can all relate to, right? Of Oh, yeah my identity has changed or things that I enjoy or who I would consider myself as a person has changed and developed throughout the year. But most of that work I feel like is done in those teenage years. Absolutely. And one of the things, one of the reasons this is so important is kind of what, what can happen if we don't uh, allow adolescents to explore and test out different identities. Mm -hmm. Um, And Erickson would define that as, Role confusion, basically. Right. Um, and there are kind of four different things that you'll see for a kid who's not really able to figure out who they are um, or even given that space. Teenagers can have difficulty with commitment because, um, you know, a really a stable personality allows an individual to have better relationship with one another. And so, or, or with uh, with others, and so you know, if they don't, if they can't really commit to something, it's really ha- hard to have a, a healthy relationship. Um, you'll see teenagers have worse mental health and well-being. Um, research has shown a strong sense of identity um, is better emotional and psychological well-being, or, or it's related to better social, emotional, mm-hmm. psycho- psychological well-being in adolescence. Right. And it can also lead to a weak sense of self. So if they have this role confusion, they aren't sh- sure who they are, it kind of leads to these questions of, well, who am I hmm. and what am I doing? And that sense of self is so important when you're a teenager, which obviously can also lead to a lack of confidence. So if they don't have a strong sense of self-identity, it's going to make people, it's going to make it difficult for them to have confidence in themselves and their abilities. And so these are just some of the negative things. And in this clip, we talk about the importance of identity, but I also thought it was important to talk about the flip side, which Mm -hmm. is if they have this role confusion and aren't allowed to discover their own identity, it really can be detrimental to these teenagers. But then research has also found that this carries over into adulthood. Mm -hmm. So if they don't form this now, when they're an adult, it's also going to affect them negatively. 
And so I just think it's important to facilitate this environment so teenagers can form their own identities. And we're going to talk about that in this clip. But we just hope you really enjoy this conversation. And once again, this is a good reminder at the beginning of the year for what we can do to help our teenagers and just give some practical tips and ideas. So hope you give a listen. Because you are listening to this podcast, we can assume a couple of things. One, that you have great taste. And two, that you care about teenagers. That is why we are so excited to introduce you to our sponsor, Lubbock Christian University. Whether you or your teen are interested in furthering your education in youth ministry, LCU is the perfect place to start. Contact our friend David Fraze to find out more about LCU and life and ministry to young people at david.fraze at lcu.edu. And don't forget, go Chaps! Teenagers don't just get to be teenagers. Right. They are also growing and learning as they go along, which sounds awful. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you think about it, if you think about when you're a teenager and you're trying to not only just get by, but you are also downloading all this information into your brain because you're trying to get ready for adulthood. Mm-hmm. And it's a weird teenagers. Adolescence is a weird in between. You're not quite a kid. You're not quite an adult. And you're trying to figure that out. And one of the tasks of adolescence that we want to talk about today is your identity. Right. And how teenagers are trying to find their identity. It's this idea of uh, differentiation, right? So I'm, mm-hmm. I'm trying to figure out who I am compared to who you are. And it's a fascinating concept that humans do this. And what always makes me giggle a little bit is like my dog sitting at home isn't sitting there thinking, who am I? <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> if he is, he's not he's not doing his job very well because <laughs> he's still sitting in that crate. <laughs> so, but just this idea, this is a, a uniquely human thing, right? Mm-hmm. And so this ad- adolescence is that phase where those questions start coming out. Who who am I? Who am I? And this can really, especially coming out of childhood in those, in those early adolescent days in middle school and late, late elementary middle school can be why teenagers might be a little moody or a little bit um, confrontational, a little bit difficult because they are now burdened with this question, who am I? And that's a big question to have to ask for a young mind. Well, and especially thinking in context of who am I compared to my parents? Hmm. Do I believe everything that my parents believed? Do I agree with how I was raised? And that can cause some pushback either way. If they don't come from a healthy home life and are trying to differentiate themselves, that's difficult. Mm -hmm. If they don't come from a good family life and they're getting drawn into that as well, that's difficult. If they feel like they, if their family at least feels like they're raising them up the right way and a teenager decides, I don't agree with that and my identity is going to be separate and there can be some pushback on families. And so they're not only trying to figure out what their identity is, but also trying to juggle who am I going to make mad about this? Do I, is it worth the fight of mm-hmm. figuring out my identity? And there's a lot that goes into that discussion. And think about your identity is so important. Mm-hmm. And honestly, it's not something I think about that often because it's just part of who I am. Right. But as a teenager, they're trying to establish that identity for the very first time. And they're likely, I mean, they're not realizing they're doing it. I mean, do you remember establishing your identity as a teenager? I guess not really. I do remember, especially going to college when I realized for the first time, this is a choice I get to make because my mom and dad's not here to tell me to do Mm -hmm. it. And I remember that being a big moment of even like, am I going to go to church this Sunday? Because for the first time, I don't have someone asking where I am. Mm -hmm. And basically, but that there is a, to me, a result of a lot of work you'd already done. Right. Right. And that you weren't even aware of. Your parents are very aware that you went through it, you know, the changes you went through back in you know, your early adolescent years. Uh, but as a parent, this can be really jarring um, that all of a sudden this kid who is, you know, completely dependent on you, uh, not only for, you know, food, sustenance, shelter, but how to make sense of the world and how to interpret um, what's going on is all of a sudden now having their own thoughts and maybe not wanting to hug you in front of their friends and doing the things that really show pushing away and I talked to so many parents, and I, I don't have a teenager yet. But my my oldest is almost eleven. It's coming really soon. 
Um, I'm, I'm already actually seeing some small signs of it, actually, but of just that starting to push away the parents take so personally. And I, I understand why that is. That's your kid. But also having to remind them that if they weren't doing this, then that's when we'd be worrying about things. They weren't pushing back. They weren't mm. doing their own thing. And so somehow reminding parents and reminding teachers, you know, people who are really close to kids, this is, this is what they do. Well, and think about that for a second. If there is pushback and there's a little bit of like, ouch, they're growing up. But think about if you had a teenager who, especially when they graduated, was like, I'm just going to sit here. Hmm. I don't have any. I don't know who I am. I can't make any decision. I'm not going to go get a job because I don't know what I want to do. I am just going to continue to live in your home and do what I've done because my identity is wrapped up in yours. Hmm. And as a parent, you would probably feel like a failure. Right. And so balancing that as adults of we don't want them to grow up, but at the same time we do. And that's the goal is to get them to a place where they do have their own identity and can go out into the world and live that out. And you'll see too, I mean, there's a, I don't have the hard stats in front of me, but teenagers are, it's taking them longer to go through this mm -hmm. than they used to, um, as evidenced by when does a teenager get their driver's license? We see a lot more now that kids are waiting till they're 18 right. instead of 16. Um, they're, t they're pushing off crucial decisions and decision making. And you talk to college professors who have freshmen in their classes who are still very tied up with their kids, right? And so this whole idea of adolescence is um, we want to encourage you, if you're seeing those signs, to not try to tamp that down mm -hmm. necessarily. You want to do it in safety. Obviously, you want to do it where it's appropriate, where you're not just having screaming matches and that kind of stuff, but also know that if, if, a, if a kid is pushing back against certain things, that that, that is a sign that they're developing as they, as they should. Well, we want teenagers to develop their own identity mm -hmm. because what we see so often too is teenagers looking other places for their identity that is so unhealthy. Mm -hmm. They're looking to social media. Mm -hmm. They're looking for the likes and the comments because that's my identity now. My identity is tied into what others think about me. Maybe it's a relationship, whether it's a friendship or a girlfriend or a boyfriend, and that's my identity. Mm -hmm. And what happens when that relationship is no longer there? Mm -hmm. Or it's tied to sports or band, or grades, and then what happens when there's an injury, mm -hmm. and what you thought your identity was as an athlete is no longer there, mm -hmm. or when your identity as the smartest person in your class, and then you go to college, and you're not the smartest mm -hmm. anymore, but your identity has been tied into that. If our teenagers are tying their identity into other things without finding it themselves and really being independent in that, mm -hmm. you're going to see a lot more issues down the road that aren't going to be healthy. Yeah, it's it's that sweet spot of figuring out who you are and being great with it, mm. right? Um, and that takes some some chipping away and uh, some work and some failure. Um, and you're gonna you're gonna have times of those of your life where you you know you work so hard at something as a teenager, and re and it all fall apart and realize, man, I, that's that that wasn't me, you know. Carly, what are some ways that we as adults can help? teenagers develop a healthy sense of identity? Well, I think one way is to make sure you're staying in conversation and asking questions. Mm -hmm. Is this something you want to do? Is this something you feel like I want you to do? Or is this something you feel like you have to do? And paying attention, if your teenager is part of a sport or a club and you're realizing they're not really finding joy in that anymore, asking questions about that. Mm -hmm. Why are you doing it? If you're not enjoying it, what is making you do that? Mm -hmm. Um, and trying to figure out and trying to help them separate. I don't have to always do stuff that other people want me to do, but let me find my own niche and my own strength and my own lane. Mm -hmm. um, affirmations, like we talked about last episode, are also big in that. Helping them find their identity by um, encouraging the things that you see that aren't always even physical or tied to something else. Mm. Um, you don't always, it's nice to affirm and compliment how they look or the things that they're doing, but also try to complement those character traits that are innate and inside of them and aren't just on the outside, because we also don't want to tie their identity to how they look or um, external characteristics, but man, you are courageous mm -hmm. and start to affirm those things instead of only affirming the things that are really easy to see. Right. And 
I think that there are different tools of identity formation that are available to teenagers that are more socially acceptable now than whenever I was a teenager, mm-hmm. right? And so sexuality is a big, uh, a big component of that. And so there's a lot of um, exploration in that area that, that, that you're going to find uh, more so now than when you were a kid. But also know whenever I was a kid, there were things that we were doing that blew our parents' minds and thought, you know, we, we, we were crazy as well. But being aware enough as a parent that uh, as your teenager throws you curveballs, you know what's really going on here, mm-hmm. right? Um, we, you know, t- teenagers are, are classically characterized as rebellious and pushing the edge. And so they're they're looked upon with derision because of that. But what if we step back and looked at them with compassion? Mm. It's a whole different it's a whole different yeah. ball game. Um, to know, hey, man, I I would hate to be in a place in life where I had to do those things to figure out who I was, mm-hmm. right? And so it it enables us, and we start the podcast every time. Teenagers are not a problem to be solved. And that really, that, that goes right in line with this whole idea of identity formation. We want to, as the adults in their life, be that safe place. I've, I've seen it. I think it was Kara Powell from Fuller Institute talked about, we as adults get to be the springboard, the, 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 like you think about an Olympic swimmer when they're swimming, you know, swimming laps, when they, when they flip over and push off that wall to go back out. The hand signs you were giving me right now for this are cracking me up. Yeah, did, did I, I think I doggy paddled, didn't I? <laughs> you did, or ran. I'm not really sure what uh, yeah, that yeah, swimming that was motion yeah, was that yeah. Chris just gave me. I yeah, love it. Yeah. So, so, but just being that solid foundation for a kid to be able to bounce off of, and it's, right. it's not. And we talk about being shock proof all the time. That's that's all key in identity formation, where they can come at you with this stuff. You knowing as the adult, I know what's going on here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not going to be surprised by this. And that relationship that I have with them is going to be that firm foundation that they get to bounce all this stuff off of while they're figuring themselves out. Uh, and we get to look at them on, with compassion while they do that. When you're right, and even just being aware of that can be a shift mm-hmm. um, and giving them that safe place and knowing if you know what they're doing instead of being shocked of like, why are they why are they acting that way? Mm-hmm. Why are they pushing back there? But when you know, oh, yeah, they're searching for identity, mm-hmm. there can be more compassion. There can be more patience because you're looking for it and you're expecting it instead of being taken by surprise. And too, I think being self-aware enough to know this isn't about me. Hmm. Right. <laughs> and so maybe having that little that in your hip pocket as a as a helper like this isn't about me. Mm-hmm. This is about them. And so let's let's make this about them. And that's a wrap for this episode. We hope you enjoyed these conversations as we revisited an old topic but also put a new spin on it. And so we hope that if you enjoyed this episode, you'll share it with a friend, text it to someone. It's really easy to share and make sure you're subscribed on your favorite podcast app so you won't miss all the new stuff that we have coming up in 2023. But until then, we'll see you next week.